Oops. Let's see. Okay, so let's start by well, um, share in the chat. Um, if you can go to your chat function. Um, let's share where has God been working uh, to reconnect your congregation over the last 12 months. If you can share that in the chat. Food truck event. That sounds interesting, doesn't it? Some parishioners starting to return after uh, not having attended two to three years. That's great. Active J2A group. Restarting outreach activities that are in person. Fundraising. More members staying for coffee hour and just enjoying fellowship. That's wonderful to, to feel, isn't it? Uh, Chuck, can you share a little about the food truck event? Uh, what is it a fellowship event? Is it? Okay, so I'll get a picture up here in a second. Give me a second. Sure. Because <laughs> um, I'm here with three other fellow parishioners. Oh, hello. So we're, here, we're here to group. So there's <laughs> three of us. So there's my fellow warden and our stewardship commission chair and past stewardship commission chair also I have to be married to. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all doing this kind of together. So mm -hmm. the food truck thing started in but two years ago, this year will be our third year, and we had gotten a grant as a regathering grant to do something, and it's it's all done outside. It's all done in our parking lot, and we get like I guess three food trucks. Um, there's a pizza truck, an ice cream truck, and what was the other truck? Two trucks. Okay, so pizza truck, an ice cream truck, and then we supply some like hors d'oeuvre kind of stuff ourselves. So it's all outside. It's done in the fall. Um, it's just been a great thing. We get a huge yeah. crowd, over 100 people here. That just it's a fellowship event. You know, Wonderful. No fundraising involved and no nothing. It's just everybody just gets together and just enjoys each other. That's really neat. Is it? Um, do you also find that? Um, are you inviting others beyond your congregation to enjoy it, or is it really just for your congregation? Well, it's primarily for our congregation, but everybody's always asked to invite friends. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. That's great. Uh, grill and gospel evenings. Noreen, can you share a little bit about that? Thank you. Uh, Mother Megan is probably the angel behind this. She is the chief griller. Um, <laughs> It's quite, I'd, I'd never been, to, and I've been to many, many things in churches, I've never been to anything quite like this on Wednesday evenings. Um, and last week, Wednesday, the, the our warden, Steve, was amazed because the crowd was so large. We had, of course, our affiliate partners from Grace, they come as well. You bring a dish, and um, and of course, they're the usual hamburgers, hot dogs, etc. And the weather's been nice, so we're, but we've been eating indoors. And then there is a presentation, which is, uh, the first week was Harry Potter. And I said to myself, how are these things connected to the gospel after you eat a hot dog, Harry Potter? I'm not getting it. But I, it was, I think, well, Megan, you did that one, right? 
Uh, no, I did the last one, which was Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web. Well, by then I begun to see there is some biblical sense to this, but they were really there were four of them, and um, and people are engaged and appreciative, and there's great fellowship. I I, I think that it's it's not something that will grow with huge numbers, but it's it is a good way for us to be together in this time. Mm -hmm. That's I neat. don't know, Megan, you might be able to say more because this was my first year with it. Oh, Same. sure. The Grilling Gospel started maybe eight years ago and then took a couple of years off during the pandemic when we didn't think that was a good idea. And um, Pastor Ali Van Kuyken, who's the priest associate at St. Luke's, I've retired, thought it'd be a good idea to bring it back. So we had different presenters on different dates. Uh, Pastor Ali did, um, she did the Harry Potter thing. And then we had Finding God in the Disney movie Frozen, um, was Father cool. Mike Panzarella. And then we had, uh, I think, Finding God in Bob Marley. <laughs> and it and was that was presented secret. by our Deacon Vasu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the final one was Charlotte's Web. And we end in com with Compline. So it's it's a nice occasion to get together. That's neat. And it sounds to me like you could also have even children could participate in that. Yeah. It's it's yeah. multi-generational. You could invite friends to attend with you. That's really neat. And we've always found um, we sometimes call ourselves instead of Church of the Holy Spirit, we call ourselves Church of the Holy Appetite. Because whenever we have food, we have great turnouts. But uh, it really, it really is begins some fellowship that we would have a hard time, I think, sometimes breaking the ice for. So I think that's really neat. Um, I also saw something about um, the thrift shop. Your thrift shop. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Allison said, "You say our thrift shop." has been a great motivator for parishioners to reconnect. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we have it open about three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And we've been, once a month, been opening it up on Sundays as well, just to um, encourage our parishioners to come out and meet and greet with us. And uh, we've been picking up some new um, Hispanic parishioners this way as well. And um, we're going to have a um, English as a second language uh, as a result of this coming up in September. So um, it's been a great motivator, people stopping by, chatting, uh, picking up things and picking up canning supplies, clothing for school. We had a uh, Christmas in July uh, theme for so we've been getting a lot of turnout now, uh, people donating, then hanging out, talking. So it's been, it's been really a great one. We, we had changed our parish hall, made the thrift shop larger, and uh, this seemed to have worked very, very well in getting more people in there. That's really neat. And, and did you, do you advertise those different aspects, or is it something that's just sort of... Um, it, <laughs> it's, it's in our it's in our um um what is our blog um yeah you know our church um calendar of events and um and it, word of mouth mostly and um it's in our oh excuse me <coughs> it's bad allergy season for me yeah it is it? <laughs> but um what i prepared for is pamphlets um brochures uh, one in English, one in Spanish. We have it available in the thrift shop so they can hand it out, share it. It has our contact numbers. Also, um, um, I learned that from one of our programs here um, on this on this, in this group that we've been going to, um, having a brochure. And um, this is a good way for people to connect to who to contact if they have a question about an activity. Um, and those are pamphlets, are brochures are in the thrift shop um, in a very prominent place. So that's really neat. So we're really using it as our hub of um, of contact and communication. I don't know if we meant it that way, but it's certainly turning out that way. <laughs> service to one another. I think that's really yeah. neat. 
-hmm. There's so many great ideas. I mean, what we will do as a follow up to tonight's session is we will take all of the ideas that uh, you've shared uh, in the chat and we'll con consolidate them into a, I guess, an additional slide for this deck that we can share with you afterwards so that you can review all of the, uh, the chat um, entries as a follow up. Does anyone have anything that they put in the chat that we that they'd like to share before we move to the next slide? All I can add is that um, we've had an interim for 14 months, and when he came, our, uh, we had about 32, 35 people at the mm -hmm. 10 o'clock service. And he came in, I mean, such a blessing, and he just calmed the storm, and um, he just helped us heal. So our new priest is arriving. He's moving in, or well, he's our uh, priest in charge. So he is moving into the rectory this coming weekend, and his first Sunday will be this coming Sunday. So we feel, and our interim feels, that we're in really good shape to um, begin a new ministry with him. You know, he he helped to oh, just even the plane. You know, take care of small and large conflicts but um it had been it has been a very positive time for us that's wonderful wendy you have your hand up yes good afternoon everybody Hello. i am hailing you from barbados right now <laughs> wish i was there <laughs> Anyway, um, St. Mark's started a food pantry, a free-for-all food pantry on our front lawn last year, and it works well. One of our parishioners go to the various food banks in Union County and replenish it. Um, parishioners bring in food when they go shopping, they'll pick up something. And we recently started a Girl Scout um, troop at our church. So when the Girl Scouts are there, they're there twice a month. They go out and restock it. Wonderful. So and that's, that's going service. good. Yeah, yeah. The door kind of fell off. And another parishioner um, offered to rebuild. So we have a much bigger one now. But unfortunately, we found somebody was sleeping in it. Can you believe that? But yeah. anyway, I have news for you guys. We have, I'm down here for a family reunion, so I went to my um, family church on Sunday. It's called Holy Trinity Anglican Church. High church. Incense, okay? <laughs> all of my U.S. family were blown away. In an Anglican church in the Caribbean, they were not playing the pipe organ, which is these churches are built in the 1800s. They had young people playing drums, steel pan, guitars, saxophone, you name it. And the liturgy was all upbeat. This church holds about 400 people. There were at least 350 people there. And trust me, it was the Harvest Sunday. The service was three hours long Goodness, wow. and we did not have a boring moment. So mm -hmm. afterwards I said to the priest and we have young people, your 20 and 30 year olds. And of course you have the seniors like myself. So I said to the priest, I said, how do you attract all these young people and children? The Sunday school had at least 30, 40 people and then Barbados, for a small island, we have over 500 religious churches, okay? So there's a church around every corner. Yeah. This Anglican church was packed. So I said to the priest, how do you attract the people? He said, you know what? You have to meet young people where they are. They don't want no dowdy music. They want upbeat music. They will learn the gospel and learn everything else the same way. So just saying, we have to change our attitude. And this was high church with incense. Okay? So food for thought. Very much so. Thank you. 
thank you everyone for sharing in the chat. I think that you know, there's such great ideas and I'm going to definitely go back and review them after um, afterwards just to see what we can bring back to Holy Spirit where, where I am a member. Um, let me go to the next slide. I think that what we were just talking about, um, many of the things that you share would probably plug into um, this, this table. And so we had found um, last year when we did this workshop, uh, we were, I think at that point, we were really coming out of COVID. So we were looking at how have we evolved our ministries at our, our respective churches for the different areas of ministry? Uh, what new things had emerged? Um, what existing ministries did we pivot to, I guess, retweak them or tune them to, to be more, um, I guess, um, viable during the pandemic and what things did we put on hold and so this might still be a, a very interesting exercise for some of you to do either with your vestry or a ministry group that you might have or the different groups might look at this within your church but what activities or ministries are happening at your church which ones could you or have you changed slightly to be more relevant or more accessible to different um, groups within your congregation and uh, what things are still on hold or have gone on hold now that we are, I guess, re-emerging from what had been the depths of the pandemic. And, um, and so it might just be something very interesting for you to contemplate as an exercise. Uh, last year, we did um, com compile down some of the uh, responses that we got from a number of congregations that had participated. And so you'll have these this slide and this next slide to review um, afterwards. We'll send out the, this deck uh, so that you can take a look at what, what this was a snapshot from last year, but you can see how some, um, some congregations had new ministries emerging in different areas, or they pivoted and reframed um, ministries that they had had before so that they could be more um, uh, online rather than just in person. And it might be an interesting exercise also for you to see where you might have gaps. Perhaps there's a gap where you're having a ministry that's having very poor attendance, and perhaps that's a trigger to look at how could you pivot it so that it might be more accessible or, or um, attended by more members of your congregation. So this is just, so this, this matrix is just, or this spreadsheet is just uh, perhaps a proposed um, follow-up exercise that you might bring back to your congregation or to your vestry uh, to contemplate. Um, anything that anyone wants to share as I was describing that, either from the project resource team or one of um, one of the attendees for tonight's session. Any thoughts come up? This is Shirley. Hi. Yes, Shirley. Hi. We're looking this summer um, to uh, get involved with youth in our community, and we're going to start an arts and crafts uh, afternoon with them. Uh, mm. Many of the a number of the children come to our feeding program uh, on Sunday, so we're we're going to look to start this in the next few weeks. We're going to have yeah. arts and crafts. Uh, we we may even have a book drive that we're going to be starting, and finally getting them ready, of course, for school with uh, supplies uh, for school book bag mm -hmm. and other um, supplies that they may need. It's a way to get them involved with our church. Uh, and we want to be of service to our youth, our, our, our kids that come to our yes, meeting girl. programs. Bye. So that's what we're getting ready to do, and we're excited about that. That sounds really, really neat. Is it something where you're inviting members of the community to participate as well? Yes, of course. That's the whole idea. The, 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 those that uh, are our feeding program, uh, of course, it, our our primary um, uh, participants are the, the local uh, 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 kids and families that reside in the, the apartments near our church. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be our focus. Wonderful. Anyone else have something they want to share? 
around evolving your ministries? Eva, if, if I may, I, I, I'm really interested in hearing a little bit about how, how people's ministries are continuing to change. You know, we are a year out from the last time we did this workshop. And um, one of the things I heard in the, in the first part of the discussion that we, we just wrapped up is how many new things are happening. Old things are sort of falling by the wayside in a few places or being adapted. Would people yeah. be willing to give one example of something new, something changed, something on hold? And you can you can pick any category, but would people be willing to put into the cat the, the chat so that as we go forward to share the slides and capture this conversation for, for use in the wider community as a reference for those who are here and beyond? And to have a second year of data. Would be willing to would people be willing to give one example of one new, one pivot? one on hold mm -hmm. in the chat. That would be great. And we also have an opportunity to share and a bit later on uh, what's working. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question to you about what's working, which strategies have been successful and so on. So um, in the chat, you want us to, to drop in something that. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna yeah. put here. Um, I'm just going to put the word new, and that'll be a place marker in the chat record when we look at it later. But seeing that in the dark green across the top of the slide, these columns, music and worship, children, youth and families, seniors, fellowship formation and service to others. Can you give one example? Pick any one column, but name something new that your church is doing in any of those six categories. Just name the category and briefly name what is it. it, it we won't have time for a long description of it, but if you can give a, a few word label. So pick something, something new for each of these. And then we'll repeat that exercise, this exercise for pivoted and on hold in just a second. But what's one new thing? Pick any of those columns. Name one example of a new thing. Messy church. <laughs> Have most people had a chance to give their one example of, of something new in one of these categories? Yeah. The uh, second category, and I'll mark it here as a uh, placeholder in the or bookmark in the chat is pivot. Same question again. In, in any one of these six columns, what's the ministry that you saw had to, to pivot? That is change shape, change direction, shift focus adapt in the last year or so? What's one thing that an existing ministry that changed or your approach to something that changed? Pick any one of those categories. Have most people had a chance to put something under pivot? It looks From the number of responses, it looks like you probably have. And then what's something that went on hold? Something that you used to do either before COVID or even during the pandemic it's now either gone by the wayside, put up on a shelf for a while, that you put on hold. What's something you put on hold within the last year or so? Something that's no longer happening, no longer needed, no longer coming together the way it once did. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Looks like most people have had a chance to comment on something on hold. Um, I'm not going to try and unpack all of these now. I thank you for your input. When Later on, we're going to have a discussion about what's working, what's not working. We can all draw on this again. But I think this is a valuable snapshot on time of what's going on in the church right now. Uh, what's, what's new, what's adapting, what's changing. So thank you for that. Very good. I'm going to turn it over now to Mother Megan. Thank you, Father Bob, for the perfect layup for our next uh, conversation bit here. We're going to do some breakout groups. Um, here are some questions to consider as we do break in groups. And it, as I was listening and I was watching the chat, I was thinking to myself, well, why is this important? I think it's important for 
uh, this particular subject of stewardship because we want to know where we have been and where we are going. We want to evaluate what's working well and what's perhaps needs improvement or should be let go. And it's good to know where you've been as you prepare to see where you're heading. It will help you perhaps understand better how to reach people um, and the nature of the message that you're going to share. So I think Eva or perhaps Father Bob will put us into breakout groups and we'll have facilitators and we'll spend about 10 minutes. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how to put people in breakout groups. I don't know. Oh, oh, I don't know how to do that uh -oh. either. Is Phyllis still here? Yep, I'm still here and yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Would you would you be so kind? We will Very put that funny. on like we will put Thank that you, on Father like, Bob. Continue your training list. There are 19 of us, so um, let's see. So how do you what do you think? Like four groups? Five four groups? Group. Four groups? Four groups. Okay. Um, if you can put Eva, Megan. If you can. Yeah. Shirley and me in separate groups, if possible. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I am going to. <clears throat> Excuse me. And do I need to stop sharing when um, when we do the breakouts? It'll automatically stop sharing. I wouldn't worry too too much about that. So, um, okay. So, am I? Let's see. <clears throat> All right, I think we're ready to go here. I am going to go ahead and send everybody to breakout rooms. Have fun. Oh, um, how much um, time are we doing this? 10 minutes. Okay, after 10 minutes. Okay, so you're going to see a countdown timer start a minute before um, the, the breakout rooms close. Okay? Okay. Tell us. I expect right. to report back to the group when you come out, please. <laughs> and for the little ones. You're back in. Oh, she had to step along. Uh, oh. I'll, I'm the one who's been kicked out. Hi, Phyllis. Hey, how are you, Martha? Good. We just got kicked out of our room, and they wouldn't let us join the meeting again. So I'm joining from my PC. And I'm going to just hook it up to the screen so you guys can see it too. I think so. Do I? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think she does. Yeah, Which room were you guys in? One. Um, one? one. We couldn't hear anyone in the room, so we said, we can't hear you. Just move ahead without us. Hmm. We got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, well, and actually, they're all going to come back in about 30 seconds. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you just... how are you? yeah, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? All right. I don't know if I ever got this big one over here. This one right here, probably. Okay. I haven't met them. Let's give it a second to kick in. Okay. 
Type on my keyboard. Oh no, you can type on your keyboard, Marza. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's, there's those. And yeah, there we go. Make... So we're not locked out. You can't kick us out. Oh, they, they so this is the main room. You can't get kicked out of this one. So <laughs> thank you, everybody in group three. You were fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> it was a fast 10 minutes. We, Ooh, we could wow. another 10. <laughs> could have used more time. I can, I can arrange that. <laughs> is wow. is Chuck Nil here? Why well, I, I am here? I am here yeah. under Martha Hyde. Oh, it's Martha. <laughs> um, we oh, yeah, I know we you got had kicked out. We were told we could not re-enter, but yes. we found it, we found a workaround. <laughs> good, good. I knew you were Chuck having Nil, trouble, Martha Heiner. And um, they gained the system. They gained the system. All right. That is. Uh, oh, if you want to kick us out, kick us out again. That's fine. No, no. Gen <laughs> gentle as lambs, wise as foxes. You're on the right track. Somebody, somebody, somebody I, I remember saying that. Um, so, how, how was that? Um, is there, there one person from each group could talk about uh, what trends you saw, what's, what, what's working, what's not working, some of the examples that came out? Or how do you want to structure this, Megan? You were, you were doing this. Well, we did say. Um, Project resource members who are in groups could help uh, be the reporters um, to, but obviously anyone who was in the group, and we hardly, we barely scratched the surface, even though the groups were small, uh, of what people are doing. Um, I would say from the two congregations that um, we had in our group, St. Peter's, Clarksboro, and St. Barnabas in Monmouth Junction, uh, that there's a fair amount of energy now mm -hmm. around doing things for your community. Uh, so we heard about the new food pantry and the grant that they got at St. Barnabas and that that's actually attracting people as, you know, to help with the food pantry, you know, ranging from small children to older adults uh, who can offer their time and help do the work of the food pantry for the community. So that was yeah, interesting. It's that nice to have a food pantry. Yeah. That's like, sorry, that's like, that wasn't, um, sorry, Reverend Michael, that wasn't um, St. Barnabas. I, did I say that? I thought I, oh, no, St. Peter. Peter. Yeah. Peter. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. St. Barnabas, I should say, um, which I know a little bit because I've been there now, um, uh, a few times and watched over the summer is um, looking to move away from uh, funding particular projects that they need to do and to look towards stewardship in a different fashion, searching for ways um, that they can engage their own members as well. They're seeing some need among, um, they're seeing need both outside the church and in the church. And, you know, one of our themes is connecting and reconnecting. Um, they're looking particularly at reaching out to the older members of their congregation who are finding it complicated to get to church. I should say that St. Barnabas has done a good job of continuing to use Zoom. And this is sort of a question we didn't get to address was how much are you still using uh, so-called, you know, virtual worship. How much is that a part of the life of your congregation? And at St. Barnabas, they talk to the people who are on Zoom and hear from them and pray for them. So um, that still functions for them. But something that maybe we'll touch on is how are people um, using virtual church these days? So that that's it. That's my group. It was wasn't long enough. I can uh, jump in with our group and just pick up on what you were saying, Mother Megan, because Father William was talking exactly about that um, aspect of Zoom, that when you have Zoom, it's wonderful because you can connect far afield, people who live, you know, many miles, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles away, and they're there. On the other hand, uh, if you're still doing Zoom, then some people are just staying home and going to church on Zoom. And then you don't have as many people in church. And that it's hard to judge 
um, some Sundays it's great and some Sundays it's not, and it's hard to find the balance there. Um, Doreen uh, had mentioned earlier about the new uh, uh, vicar or rector uh, for uh, for her church, and that that who has been wonderful. And some people are taking a wait and see attitude. Um, you know, uh, new person. Uh, how are they going to do things? Uh, what's it like going to be like? And so the the challenge there is overcoming that. And then uh, Wendy was talking about how important it is uh, for her church to have music. And right now, no organ, no organist. Is that right, Wendy? And no music director. So um, a lot of good. Yep. Go ahead. Is that no, right? we, oh, we lost our musicians. So we look, we're looking for a new one. If, we, if anybody knows of any out there, send them our way. So a real positive story from Wendy on starting with one what teenager and now having no little, little, little one little ones little ones, yeah. little ones. and eight, now nine, having eight, well, eight, eight nine ten year olds That's but great. Uh, again music it's the heart of the church and uh and so when you don't have that people drift away so so in group three um St. Stephen's and Stephanie they are, they are, what they've done is what I've really seen from them is they've made stewardship so wide and so vast mm -hmm. and it's fun. The activities that they have selected, not only, not only are they fun, but educational and just zeroing in on the needs of their congregation and they're reaching out to the community, which I think is really, mm -hmm. really significant. One of the nice things, oh, there were so many nice things that were shared, but uh, a dinner dance, a Valentine's dinner dance. How mm -hmm. great is that? That's fun. That's inviting. Mm -hmm. And it's just a way to not only reach the congregation, but to reach out to the community. And there was no charge. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I really, really love that. I loved uh, the fact that the breadth of the activities, again, from the the fundraising to the legacy uh, efforts to the Bible study, I think you mm -hmm. you talked about. What was a general theme in our group was you can't just put something in the bulletin, mm -hmm. but you need to give that special personal touch and talk to your members. Go up, spend a little time with them, explain to them what the needs are. And many of them, when you do that, uh, they'll give you some time and they'll love mm -hmm. doing it. And as Stephanie said, some of them are now coming to her saying, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. And certainly St. Peter's growing, growing, growing. Mm -hmm. um, th just a huge amount of activities. But it sounds like, again, that they're mm -hmm. not just putting that notice in the bulletin, but they're actually reaching mm -hmm. out and talking and communicating with their congregants. They uh, they sh he shared that it was the priest, but it sounds like it's much more than the priest that's getting mm -hmm. people to be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thank my group for that. Barely, you forgot St. Luke's. St. Luke's. Mm -hmm. St. Luke's. What there there were. There were some growing issues, but the thing that was shared is the beauty of the spirit of the church and that there's a that spirit is going to grow. And that's the feeling I think that you share. One of the activities that was look at my notes here, the mass on the grass is working mm -hmm. and it's a way to continue to do the things that the congregation enjoys. And I think that's going to continue to help you, uh, Noreen. If you want to add anything else to what I just said, I'm so sorry. I apologize. No, no, no. Thank you. I'd, I'd forgotten Black Lives Matter, which is a growing ministry mm -hmm. at St. Luke's. Yes. Thank you. Is there a fourth group? Or were we just three groups? There is a fourth group? Oh, Father Bob, please. In the group, uh, 
I was with um, Allison from Spotswood. All right. And so many faces. And Debbie from Point Pleasant, right? And um, I think overall what I heard was there's a lot of activity, a lot of new energy in worship and an outreach, both of which provide platforms for fellowship that, that people are hungry for and thankful for. And if I, so if I had to sort of frame it, does that sound like a fair summary of the trends of, of what we had in our group? Um, Spotswood had a lot of examples of things that are um, thriving and taking mm -hmm. off and um, mm -hmm. Point Pleasant did too. Uh, in, in Merchantville, we talked about um, the, uh, the food pantry taking, you know, really expanding in the last year or two um, as, and, and some things in the thrift shop. Uh, we actually talked also about, we had a dumpster day. We had 20-something uh, people show up. We had to hire a second dumpster. We cleaned up so much stuff out of the basement and the closets. Um, <laughs> but it brought out this cross-section of the parish. Uh, parishioners old and new. The Boy Scout troop that had just disbanded after 62 years sent a dozen people Alumni, former Eagle Scouts, parents of former members, former troop leaders came out. Thrift shop team came out. Food pantry team came out. Um, it was a little bit of everybody. We wound up filling two 30-yard dumpsters. Best, wow. best twelve, best twelve hundred dollars I remember spending. Um, <laughs> but it made room for other ministries. It was exciting. It was empowering, and um, we now have spent spa more space for today's and tomorrow's ministries. So. Uh, we did a quick, we also were running short, uh, we did a quick lightning round. What's stuck? What's not working? And one person said choir. It's an in-between time for the choir. Is that, was, that, was that Debbie? And um, I'm going to go to Allison's church because they don't have any stuck. So I'm going to. We're growing. I'm, I'm going to go. We're doing I'm going to go there. We're, we're moving along. <laughs> and um, one thing that I named uh, is, is stuck is it, it's been very hard to have a lot of home visits. Um, I, I did some throughout the pandemic to think people wanted it and could figure it out for a while. There were none, but, um, we stopped lay Eucharistic visits for two years plus. And, um, that is slowly coming back together. We've had about half a dozen people come forward, about half new people, about half people returning to the ministry. So that, that's still stuck, but there's some seeds that are planted and growing. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was from Mark. Can I ask a question? Um, how or, or if first, if are you tracking participation um, in any formal way? And if so, how? You're asking everybody? I'm asking yes, everybody. I am like that, but our inter Okay, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. When we use the Zoom, uh, we have um, the host, two people hosting, and uh, they track the people who are using our Zoom. If we miss the number, they tell us. Uh, there are some people who approach us, say, for example, they are in the same house, but they are using two different devices. We also know that we don't want to duplicate the numbers. There are also some people who attend as a group in a home, that one we also know. So uh, as of right now we know uh, homes that come to us by via Zoom as a couple or as a family. And then those who walk in, we count them just as usual. So our number is determined by the people. Of course, when, we, when we're putting people who are um, present on Eucharist, we only record those who are present in the church not on the zoom but in general number we combine the people on the zoom and the people present together to know the people who attended our service that's how we attract we attract them and then we ask if they need prayers we put our phone out there how to approach us how to pray for them if they have birthdays we celebrate birthdays together by singing the birthday our senior warden is, um, uh, you know, very creative. She makes a, a, a virtue cake 
a very nice one to celebrate with them. So that's how we are. Other than that, um, we make sure that we no longer send written, or, but only emails, especially to those who are far from us. How about participation in uh, other activities, uh, not necessarily Sunday morning? Our ECW group has uh, come back very strongly and um, every month just participation is probably 13 to 15 women. And we had a Christmas in July luau last week <laughs> with 25 people, plus our interim priest and his wife. And um, it's crazy fun. But it's just so nice. good for us to be together again because, you know, it's our family. You know, we're back. So everything else is a little bit slower right now. Anyone else? I think it's a great, a great point, though, Mother Megan, because I was just sitting here thinking, yeah, I don't think we count the numbers for the women's book group or the Wednesday mm -hmm. morning Eucharist or the... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, online uh, evening prayer that Mother Amy does. I don't think we're mm -hmm. tracking those numbers at all, and we should be. Yes, yes I'll say the same as well for St. Barnabas. We, we, we have our women's linked meetings. We, we never really count how many we have there. We also have our Ministry of Racial Diversity, and that's a, a big group too. Um, we just know when the groups are large and when they're small, you know, we just, uh, we, we haven't been counting those. And then we had our Piñata Day where we invite, we had people within the church and people outside as well. And we were just looking at that by the number of tables that were filled. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have to do a better job too of right. Um, right. counting those mm -hmm. as we go along. I, I would agree with that because we have other activities, our Bible study every week. You know, we just kind of look around and say, oh, yeah, there's, you know, got a good crowd yeah. today. But we <laughs> exactly. count that. Obviously, our feeding program, we do count. We do count those that attend that. So that is one what, area where we do. Count. What time of day do you find Bible study to be most successful? Evening, daytime or both or? Our day, our Bible study is noon day Mondays. We had one on Wednesdays, but it was zero attended. Okay. Every and church seems to have its own um, Bible study preferred times, and I've seen it be, you know, a Wednesday at noon. I've seen it be a Thursday evening. I've seen it be Sunday right after church. It really is one of those variable things. Uh, everybody says they want to do Bible study and then finding the time that works for the right. most is, is really a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. But now that we've talked about how we might track um, participation so that we're not just relying on the hunch that we have that things are going well or they're not going well, um, and whether or not you formally write down participation in non worship activities, most clergy will write down the numbers present, the numbers receiving you, et cetera. Uh, what do you do with that information? How would that help you in the stewardship season as you uh, start to think about the communications you're going to have with the members of your parish at large? How will you use that information? Well, I could tell you how one of our members used it, certainly for our, our coffee hour ministry. It was wonderful. He just, again, went and, and spoke to people, talked to them. And so he's grown that whole ministry. He has more than enough. Well, I can't say more than enough, but um, it's it was it was wonderful to see it grow. And uh, where we have more than enough members for each one of those weeks um, and some spare ones to cover it. So 
Um, so in my moving forward with that, I would go to him, uh, to that chair of that, uh, of that ministry to say, how can we help you? Do mm-hmm. you need extra help? Do you need some backfills? Uh, that type of thing in, as the stewardship chair, that's what, that's what I would do. Sure. Where can we help sure. you? And, and how might, you know, information about, um, Increased attendance at coffee hour or um, the increasing number of families with younger children uh, become part of your communications during what we like to call stewardship season. I'm, I'm thinking ahead to how you communicate this good news to everybody because uh, not everybody is going to be in the church. Not everybody is going to participate in Bible study. Not everybody is able to stay for coffee hour. And yet these are all parts of the life of the church. Um, so that's just actually, I'm, I'm putting that out there. Uh, we always have this issue in congregations that there are activities some people participate in, and yet they're not aware of other activities going on in the same congregation, sometimes almost simultaneously. And I think, too, if, if um, we haven't seen a parishioner, I know that we don't really take formal attendance, but it's probably worth uh, some brainstorming of who haven't we seen recently and and, and maybe making a very personal invitation uh, from someone who they have a connection with. Um, we had talked about relationship mapping in one of our other workshops. Uh, Father Bob had um had shared what his congregation has done. And so maybe, you know, that's a way to reconnect with people we haven't seen, especially as we go into the fall and have any sort of welcome back or uh, we're calling it welcome forward um, events. Ooh, like that. so yeah, that. that's cool. Personally invite uh, people we haven't seen in, in the different things that have been going on to, to yeah. participate or to come or to find out how they have been. So, yeah, so at St. Barnabas, we, the vestry members, uh, what we did uh, was divide up the members, well, at least the members who are on Realm or now, uh, who are registered on Realm, um, we divided it up, numbers up, so that each vestry member has um, a set of people to call every month. Now, um, the first time of calling, we made sure to ask if they're okay with receiving those calls and most were but that was when we got to hear what people were feeling how they felt what they missed what they um, didn't like you know and so that's our way of communicating Um, what we have to do is just to make sure that that's consistent so that people are always called but um, that's our way of trying to you know in in our group I had said that we're really looking inward to see how we can help our parishioners within the church Um, and so that's one of the ways we're doing it by reaching out at at those times and then um, I'm a senior senior warden and so the other thing I have is I have everyone who's registered on Realm I have their I have them on text as well so that you know, some of these events that are coming up, I give them reminders. Hey, you know, uh, we're going to have our, in the, in the case that we're going to, I'm going to be advertising soon, our cyber security session is going to be on soon. Make sure you tune in, you know, that sort of thing. So that way you're in constant communication. Um, when we had the time change, we, we st- stopped our services from two to one. Um, it was a very easy way of getting everyone to be reminded of the fact that the clocks were changing and you know this is the time we're going to have the services now so that people uh are just feel connected with the church so that's our one of our themes to try and connect more and so i like the direction that uh, Reverend megan is going with the uh you know of making people aware so i think in our stewardship letter we're going to Put all the things that we do and you know if, if there are other things that you would like to see or you've heard of other churches do let us know and we'll see how we can add that in and 
come and join the fun for all these ones that we have going on already. So it's, you know, awareness, awareness, awareness. That's um, the way we're driving our own message forward. Our church. Thank you, Sandra. I see that it's about quarter after eight, and I know there are a few more slides. Um, yeah. So I, we should turn this back over to Eva. Okay. And um, I'm, Shirley, are you going to be taking this slide? I can, sure. Thank you. Thanks. So what we'd like to do, uh, we've had a lot, a lot of sharing and, and wonderful ideas. Our next step is to really drive that home, if you would. So so reconnecting how what are going to what with all of this great information what are the what are the little things and i call them small steps but what is your next small step and then you can begin to make those larger steps so what i'm going to ask us to do i don't know if we're going into groups or not i'm not sure about that are we going into groups or no let's use chat for this yeah okay so so what we wanted to do is to is to talk about in the next few minutes what are what is that one next step that you think you can take who are you going to use to help you get there sometimes it's easier and better if you have a buddy someone that you can connect with to help you make that next step so we're going to talk about that and then we really want to discuss with you and find out how you're going to share that next step with your church, with your congregation. So let's talk about that. I need a volunteer. Who's going to go first? What is that one next step that you'd like to take? And who are, who are you going to buddy up with that's going to help you? to take that next step and to work with you as you bring that forward to your congregation. You could put some ideas in the chat or you could just volunteer right now. Well, our next step is to welcome our rector and help him get settled in and provide opportunities to for him to get to know us and for us to know him. Hmm. Is anybody are you going to do that through an activity or or how are you going to do that in terms of welcoming well we haven't had a vestry meeting since june okay. so our next our next one is uh on the 17th of this month mm -hmm. but nothing is planned yet so but i i really think that that's probably our next our first step mm -hmm. and to share with with that uh with your new rector all the wonderful things that that you hope will con go on and 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 certainly through stewardship yeah yeah our stewardship that... yeah our stewardship uh chairman is just waiting for him to come he hasn't <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> so he's waiting but um i'm here to find out and i can pass it on to him but um so he's he's okay. waiting you know we've always done the same old thing so maybe you know mm -hmm. the new rector will have other ideas. Okay. All right. Who's next? Who'd like to share? Let's see what do we got? Anyone else would like to share what some next steps are going to be? What is that one next step? I'm going to buddy up with my fellow vestry members and bring back some of the great ideas from tonight. I like the food trucks and I like the yeah. arts, arts and craft afternoon for children in the community. Mm -hmm. And I like the grill and gospel. And so I uh, can't do everything all at once, but those were such some of the great ideas that people shared. So I'm going to take them back and see what, you know, what we want to do. You got a little, you have a buddy that you're going to hook up with? I'm going to hook up with the whole vestry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hook up with it. All right. Right. Buddy. Yeah. Okay, Noreen. Yeah, I, I first of all, going to report this back to the stewardship committee, which is a very active committee. But um, but I'm new to the parish and to the vestry and the committee. So, you know, you don't want to 
seem too pushy. But uh, the chair of the committee is very receptive to new ideas, as is the senior warden. So particularly, I like the idea of getting to people individually, mm -hmm. approaching people individually, the new people, and asking, could you help with this or that? And I also like the idea from St. Barnabas of vestry members contacting individuals regularly with their permission yes. and texting important information. I really like that. But first, I'm going to take back my notes from tonight to the committee. Excellent. Excellent. Anyone else? Stephanie, I'll, I'll just call out people. Stephanie. What's your one next step? Well, we've already started um, organizing okay. our stewardship mm -hmm. committee, and my husband is the chair of it. Uh, we have um, reached out. The committee we had wants to reorganize. Some of the people we had on it feel they don't know as much as the rest of us do, mm -hmm. so they want to partner with us and learn from us and see where we could go, uh, you know, and we've already started brainstorming who we could ask to speak. We usually reach out to parishioners. So we have one that talks about like the history of um, the, um, you know, church a little bit and, and about stewardship, the history of that. And then one is financial. And then we'll have different people talk about their relationship with church. So we've already started thinking about who at eight o'clock and 10 o'clock service. And, and then we're planning on finding someone from the diocese to be our speaker um, at, um, you know, Consecration Sunday. So that's where we are already. There's several people here on this project resource right. Right. committee that are fabulous. I know. So yeah, well, We'd love one of them to contact us <laughs> so they could join us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tom? You still there, Tom? Oh, Tom, I remember him. Um, <laughs> our stewardship, our stewardship program um, mm -hmm. uh, is, is usually has a new new theme each year and mm -hmm. uh, new new pieces and parts. And that meeting won't take place for another week or so. Mm -hmm. um, so. We really, we really haven't got gotten started. We have dates for um, uh, stewardship Sunday and things like that planned and planned on the calendar, but uh, exactly what we'll do before that, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, we've we've had uh, um, priestly sermons, we've had lay sermons, we've done all sorts of mailings, we've had names hanging all over the parish hall for everybody in the parish. We've mm -hmm. done. Lots of different things, but um, it's time. It's time for uh, it's time for a new plan, and we haven't uh, we haven't reached that point mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna for myself. I I would like to get a couple more new members onto the stewardship committee, but certainly these ideas uh, are just that really really nice. So I got some new fresh ideas, but I need a few more hands. So uh, I, I got to work on that personal touch that we talked about to, to get a few more members. And my priest wants us to get started in August. It's now August, and uh, I better get going. So uh, my next step is to finish my planning, meet with my, get some ideas down, meet with my committee, and just try to get a few new members uh, to begin to... Um, Plotted out for the rest of the year. We had some ideas, but we really just have to to submit some of those ideas and and get some volunteers. Uh, I was I was introduced to a book. It's called A Spirituality of Fundraising, Henry Nowen book. Mm -hmm. It's oh. a um, it's a okay. speech. It's a speech that he gave, mm -hmm. and after he passed away, uh, his his, the person who worked with him and yeah. other people who knew him put this together and it's an easy read, but it, it it's just so, it's so good because it's not, it's not about raising money. It's right. about, it's about 
we're giving back. So um, I recommend it. It's I got my copy on um, what was it? One of those um, book used book uh, sites. So could you just put that in the chat, please? Yeah, I oh, I will. Ask the same okay. thing. I asked that. Yeah. 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 Would anyone else like to share before we round this round this out? Mother Megan, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, um, we hope we see you again a week from tonight. And we're going to talk about encouraging people to join your stewardship team. Uh, because it's not everybody's cup of tea at the first thought of it. But there are ways to bring people along. There are members of our congregations who have particular gifts, and we need to help them uncover those gifts for the sake of the congregation and for the work of Christ's mission in this world, which is really what it's all boils down to. The purpose of stewardship is not simply to keep the lights on or the roof from leaking or the choir master paid. It's really to promote the mission and ministry that Christ has entrusted to us and which we carry out through the church. So uh, we had thought about a closing prayer from a member of our committee who is a lay person, uh, not a clergy person. Any person can pray. And so I uh, would invite that uh, or issue you that call, that invitation to offer prayer. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And keep thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. 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 Everyone, wonderful to see you all. Hope to see you again in a week. Hope you will bring along other folks from your teams, your congregations, and let's share our thoughts again. All right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.